back at it guys if you can see cut the angle here you're gonna put the first piece up on the top it is windy today but I want to at least get these three pieces up to cover up that insulation so it doesn't blow off luckily it hasn't blown off yet uh, winds blowing about 15 to 20 miles an hour so glad I went ahead and stapled it all so I'm gonna try to get three pieces up that's my goal for today if I can do that I'll be happy and then I'll wait for a less windy day to finish the rest um, I would go ahead and do the bottom but I gotta put the insulation before I can do that and I don't want to do that if it's super windy and so it's just a the insulation is proving to be a pain in the butt mostly just for logistical reasons but <clears throat> uh, let's see how this comes out I measured the low side just like I did with the insulation I measured the low side I know this covers three feet so a 312 pitch and three feet I'm gonna have nine inches of rise and three foot of run so I measured the low side and I added nine inches to the for the high side made my cut and here's how it came out I have cut with a circular saw because uh, it creates less heat, but it's noisy and nasty and chunks are flying. The cutoff wheel with the grinder works pretty well. You can see it's a pretty clean cut. Uh, it does introduce some heat, so you could probably see more rusting up here, but this is actually going to be up at the top that's covered by the rake. So it's not a huge deal. All right, let's see how close I am or how far off I am. All right, guys. <coughs> <coughs> Around of hours. Oh, no. Just, just kidding. Oh, oh, hold on, let me block the sun there. Okay, so, got my piece right here cut. Man, that angle don't look like much, does it? It is cut at an angle, I promise. I'm getting ready to get up here. I'm gonna get up on this ladder on that side of the building. Hopefully I can hold it where I want it, get a couple screws in it, then I can move on. Uh, it's gonna be a pain for sure. Um, We'll see how it goes. I have not put this piece up yet to see. I may have to put, I may, I may get up there and find out that I need to cut another half inch or inch off. Hopefully I don't find out that I need to add an inch because I'm not sure how well that'll go. All right, let's get going. That actually went kind of better than I thought, actually. Uh, there it is. We've got, it actually worked out perfect. Came out to right at the end of this trim here. I want you to look at how perfect this is. Could not have come out any better. You know, I mean, if this overlapped a little bit, it'd be fine. I'll just have to take that screw loose, pull it back. But the way it is, I mean, it, it's, it could have come out better there for where I'm needing to stop. Uh, I did have to do an adjustment here. Uh, you'll see my ribs are slightly off. I forgot, I completely forgot to even check that. Uh, so this one here, I kinda, I fixed it. <laughs> uh, but you can see where it's kinda, looks a little bit different. If you look from this side, you can see it. See that? Uh, but uh, it's not a big deal. That That's not gonna cause any leaks or anything like that. So there we have it, guys. We've got, this side done. I do have to put some screws uh, in the old metal over here where I take it apart. I haven't put all them back yet. Uh, but we've got this side done. We've got just about that much done on this side. One more piece at the top and I'd have an equal amount done from over here to over there. But I can't put one more piece up because I gotta put that piece of trim up and I can't put it up till I put the bottom pieces up. And I can't put the bottom pieces up till I put the insulation up. Like I said, that's why where the insulation has become kind of a logistical pain in the butt, but it's not a big deal. It, it, it is what it is. Things are going all right. For doing it by myself, I'm pretty happy with how it's going. Uh, I knew that once I got everything done where I could actually start working on the metal, it'd go pretty quick. So, you know, and it has. If I could just work on this for a day, I'd have it done. I work on an hour, hour or two here, an hour or two there, and that takes up more time because then you gotta drag all your stuff out, then you put all your stuff up, and you gotta do that multiple times, you know, so. All right, anyways, I'm gonna call it quits for today on this project because of the wind. If it wasn't blowing so bad, I'd go ahead and put up another piece of insulation and move on down, but 
it's blowing about 15, 20 miles an hour. It's not so bad over here because the barn's kind of blocking it, but I just know it'll, it'll be a disaster if I try to put that insulation on by myself. If I had help, maybe, maybe I could do it, but it's not a big deal. Tomorrow's supposed to be a little bit calmer, so we'll do it then. Good morning. We're back at it again. Uh, I just measured and cut off my two by four. I'm gonna put a two by on edge up here where this two by six is here. And that's gonna allow us uh, to pull that in. It's bowed out a little bit. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing this. That's really the only reason I'm doing Not really. That is the only reason I'm doing this. Man, it's so, there we go. So bright out there. Uh, so I'm gonna put that on edge, pull that in. I gotta do that before I put any of this other stuff on because I'm gonna attach it with screws through the, the two by, the one and a half inch way into the two by four and let that pull it in. So we're gonna do that and then we're gonna cut some insulation and take off. All right, got our next piece of insulation up. We're gonna put our bottom pieces on. All right. We've got two more sheets up on the bottom. Um, I can't quite get another piece of trim up, so I'm gonna go ahead and hang. Probably gonna be my last bit of insulation. I'll have piece two pieces together. Uh, I didn't know, I, didn't fit, I knew I wouldn't have enough to get all the way to the end, um, but I'll be happy if I can make it to the wood burner. So we'll see. I'm not sure if it's gonna make it. Um, but we'll put up what we got. If I can't make it all the way down, I may just come down and try to cover everything above the wood burner over here. We'll see how it works out. I gotta check and see what I got, we'll see. All right, I ended up getting up to here, and then I've got another partial roll that I'll be able to go straight up and make it to the top here. So this area right above the wood burner and over there won't be, which isn't a big deal. Actually, no, it needs to, has to be. This is just extra stuff that I had, I figured may as well so since i was able to do this that worked out really good i'm gonna go ahead and take my bottom on over and then that'll allow me to put up a piece of trim and continue on the top so i don't have a bunch of insulation just hanging here with nothing holding it but staples so i got my my helper today it's really making things go a lot faster thank goodness he's able to measure everything for me and um, scatter stuff out for me. You love that tape measure, don't you, Cade? He'd like to run a drill, but he's just not quite to the point where he can do that safely. Yep, what kind of measurement you got there? Okay, that's good. All right, let's go get a piece of metal. I am so proud of my boy, I'll tell you what. 
He stood right there and he handed me every screw that I just put in. One at a time out of the bag. It was perfect. You're trying to put it in the screw, but then the drill yourself, aren't you? You just don't understand. You got to put it on the hex head side. See, look, like this. Turn it around and put it right in there like that. Okay? Good job. All right, we're getting ready to put up a piece of trim. I'm going to notch it. So we'll slide in down here. And then once we put that up, we'll be ready to put up probably three, three more pieces, maybe four more pieces of metal. We've been working hard today. So hard. He's plumb wore out, guys. Plumb wore out. All right, guys, I got that piece up. Probably half the screws in it. Cade woke up, as you can probably see in the time lapse. Uh, what you couldn't hear was he, him whining and everything. So he is probably ready to go eat. He had his nap, and now we're ready to go eat, aren't we, big boy? He says, yes, come with me and get me some food. So then we go to get some food. All right, got our first piece of trim up here above the wood burner. We're gonna put this piece here, it's got a notch in it. And then the next piece will be full down to just above the wood burner. Then we'll have one more piece that'll be full down to our Wayne's coat board right in here. Evening guys. So, I just wanted to touch base and let you guys know what happened. At the end of that last clip, you saw I did a time lapse and then it didn't last very long. So if you look here, I had to cut a notch out for my next piece of metal. Notch right here. Well, I took that measurement and then I measured my piece of metal from the opposite side. So, we put it up there, as you saw, didn't fit. So, I screwed that piece of metal up I guess it happens, especially when you don't do it for a living. But I got to buy a new piece of metal, which is not a huge deal other than I got to drive about 45 minutes to get it. And I can't put up these other ones until I put that one up. And it was New Year's, New Year's Eve, day before New Year's Eve. Maybe it was New Year's. I don't remember what day it was, but holiday season, no one's open. Not a good, not, not, not a good time to do that, but... Is it really a good time to do it? Eh, probably not. So I just want to touch base with you guys. You know, I could have just deleted that piece and I didn't let you guys know I did that. But when you're measuring, make sure you measure from the correct side of the metal you're cutting. Have the same reference point, which I knew that. I just got in a hurry, I guess. I've got all the lumber, all my big lumber stacked up here, all my two sixes, two by sixes, two by twelves, two by eights. It's been there for, I don't know, a week or two. Maybe three, I don't know. Got the tractor in here, got a little bit of wood in here, uh, some other stuff, got that metal here. I was really wanting to get that done so I could get it out of here. Um, but I actually have stacked up some stuff here just to get a flat surface. I'm gonna get the skid steer out here. It's got a fork full of two by fours and uh, I'm gonna stack all I can right here. I'm gonna get the skid steer right now, pull it up here, see how many Two by fours I can stack up here and it still be stable. So a guy contacted me. I've got my old hay conditioner for sale. It's been listed for sale for a while on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, it's a 495 New Holland. If you look at some of my older videos before I was really doing any editing or anything, uh, that was what I used. Last year, this past year, 2020, is the first year I've used my disc bind. Had a guy contact me on Facebook. I gave him a call. We talked. Uh, he's interested in, in it as a backup mower. Uh, we talked about hay. Talk, he said it, this was, was the first time he's tried TEF, which was pretty interesting because it was my first year as well. Uh, talked about, uh, he has a 326 New Holland square baler, pulls it with a white 2105. I said, he said, it looks like you have one. I guess I had it in the background in one of my pictures. And uh, I said, yeah, I got a 326. So I just started using it this year. I went through it and everything. And he asked what I pull it with, 2135. Small world, huh? And uh, 
then he was talking. He said, yeah, I saw some guys bailing on, on YouTube and stuff, and it's pretty neat stuff. And I said, oh, you watched YouTube, do you? He said, yeah, a little bit. I said, well, I, I've got a YouTube channel, so you might want to check it out sometime. He said, what's it called? I said, Franklin County Forge. He said, well, I'm a subscriber. I love your videos. I was like, what? I got like 300 subscribers. The, the chances of that are like 300 out of 7 billion. Pretty low. May as well go pull, play the lottery. I'm not a gambler, though. Eh. I mean, I do hay, so yeah, I'm somewhat of a gambler. But, uh, so I thought that was really, really neat. Anyways, let's get this thing and this stuff over to the new addition. Get this stacked up and out of here. And uh, I'm going to see if I can get that hay conditioner up here on the rock. Seriously, I do appreciate you guys. I try to do these extra little things like this to make it more enjoyable for you because, hey, let's, let's face it, those first three of you, there's a lot more of you now. I do appreciate you guys that were here in the beginning. I mean, I guess you can consider this the beginning still, but I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with you. I mean, I don't want to stay here, but I want to bring you guys along for the ride. Woohoo! We're cruising now! Woohoo! Come on now. Oh, oh. Alright, let's go get these things unloaded. We have arrived, folks, if I can get out of this thing. Okay. Oh, oh, ow. Oh, oh. Did I ever tell you that one handed stuff is a lot harder to do? Maybe you already knew. Again, just in case you're now, just now tuning in. If you are just now tuning in, why did you skip the first part of this video? Come on, guys. You know, the more the video you watch, the better off we do. Come on. Anyways, we're going to stack these two buffers right over here. I don't know how much of these will fit in here. I'm thinking maybe a time lapse. You guys don't want to watch me stack all these one or two at a time, right? Off we go. All right, guys, got her all stacked up here. Probably can't even see, but bear forks. That's what I'm talking about. Let's see how many we got here. Uh, up to this first break, I got 10, so that's 40. And then I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. That's another 10, so that's 80. I've got 84 10 foot 2 by 4s left. So I use exactly 20 10 foot 2 by 4s uh, on this addition right here. That's not too bad. That worked out really, really good. It also dawned on me that you guys may be wondering why in the world did I put these, these uh, gaps in here? No, it's not for drying. It's already dried wood. If I was drying it, I would put a slat between every row of boards. This well, you know, I stack hay, gotta tie everything together. So that's what this is. Since two by fours are so narrow, if you just stack these in four rows all the way up this high, this outer row would definitely, it'd be falling over. So after 10 rows, I put these in, and what that does is that ties them all together, and you put weight on it, and it ties so like this outside one here, I can pull on it, it ain't falling over. 
And then same thing here, capping it off. And I just put a few on top to hold some weight on these. All right. Oh. Um, got the lumber stacked, so that's good. We're gonna finish this, we're, then we're gonna jump over here and work on the add-on uh, to the east, the lean-to, uh, and then of course, intermingled in there, probably at night when it's dark, I can't do anything out there. I'll be in here uh, shooting footage for the Baylor series, so that's coming right around the corner. Hopefully, you guys enjoy it. Hopefully, it, it turns out like I want it to. I know how sometimes, you know, they got these big plans and then mm, it doesn't really work out like you think, but hopefully it, it will work out. So she's a beaut. All right, guys, have a blessed day. We'll see you next time here on Franklin County Forge YouTube channel. Uh, God bless you. God bless America. Franklin County Forge out.